Okay. I don't know how to do it with you. Hey guys, this is Abel. <laughs> and I'm Rosie. Today we are going to discuss money. Money issues, not only in marriage, but in the church. I mean, they kind of both mix because I want to give to the church, but I have to make sure my husband wants to give. Yeah, and thankfully we have, uh, we both have, we both have an understanding on what it means to give to God. Um, and was that, it always easy for you to give to God? You know what? It wasn't always easy, but one of the things that I that I did that I learned growing up is you don't have. I didn't have money growing up, mm. so I didn't really value it as much. And you, you know, some people it's the opposite. You don't right. have money, and then once you get it, you hold on to right. it. But for whatever reason, it just it never bothered me to give to God, even I though love it. I love it because you didn't have a broke man's mentality. There are people that, because they were poor when they were young, they grow up and they're broke in their mind, so they still don't invest or still don't give or, you know, but, I mean, money in church is always an issue, yes? I know some people that stopped going to church because they asked for a tithe or an offering. It's like offensive to them. It's like, yeah. it's my money, leave it alone. No, they shouldn't mix, right? Definitely. But you can't get mad at the church or you might want to change congregations because, oh, the pastor's asking for too much money. But you know what? In the next congregation, they're going to do the same thing because it's not the pastor. It's the word of God. Right. And there are many verses that say about the word of God. And I'm sure you've heard some of them about tithing. Now, tithing literally means 10%. It's tithe. In, in Greek, it means 10. So the Word of God asks us to give back 10% of what truly belongs to God. Now, babe, do you really think God needs our money? No. So the Bible even tells it that it, it's not that you're giving it necessarily to God. It's for, it's for the church in order for it to keep going, in order right. for the, the building to sustain itself. That's specifically what it says. So when we say we give it to God, what we're saying is we're giving back to this, uh, to this church so that way it could keep going. Right, because Jesus Christ is the body. It's right. us. And you know what? We're always like, oh, I'll give it. Some people are like, oh, I'll give it to God. But then they don't want to give it to the people, to the body. So both extremes are wrong. And look, this is straight up. Tithing is more about honor than it is about money. It is about honoring God. It is about obeying God. And it's in everything. Tithing doesn't only mean money. It means your time, your love, your heart. It is 10% of everything that you are. So if money is keeping you away from God, then keep your money. That's just it. Because God doesn't want you to lose your blessing of having a relationship with him based on money. God gives us the opportunity to tithe so that it's an investment for us. Definitely. Now you do have to understand that by you not tithing, you're closing uh, the doors from heaven for you. There's a specific Bible verse that says that. It says, test me now, I'll open the doors of yes. heaven for you. So just understand that God wants you to come either way. Just the same way he wants us to come as sinners. If you don't want to tithe, you don't feel comfortable, that's fine. But just start putting that into your head that, you know what? I want to get comfortable with tithing. I want to tithe into a place where I feel that it's worth it to me, maybe. But just think about it like that. You're going to be closing off doors. Okay, so it's the other extreme too. God is so faithful to his promises that if you tithe and are not saved, he'll still bless you financially. Definitely. That's just the way he is. So no, you don't need to tithe to be saved. Being saved is that you believe that Christ is Lord. But you don't also have to be saved to be good financially. It is literally an investment in the best kingdom with the best return rate ever that will never ever fail. That's what tithing is. So if you're a businessman or a businesswoman or you want to become one, I suggest you tithe. But remember, it's more about honor. And we're going to give you an example. Remember when Jesus was coming in to Jerusalem, right. the triumphal entry? Right. There Palm was, Sunday. Yeah, there was tithing there. I don't know if you've ever noticed. I was reading the other day, and it said that Jesus told two disciples, go get me a donkey and her colt. Right. Okay, they were worth a lot of money, babe. A donkey and her colt was at least two two months to two years of work, of, of, of money earned. So what, it could be in our age, um, I don't know if, if we get paid many, $40,000, born it, just yeah. to be an average. Anywhere from twenty to forty thousand dollars was a donkey and her colt, and this was a businessman because if you had two, that means you were renting the other one. Mm -hmm. Now Jesus was so sure that they were going to give up this donkey. The disciples even asked, "Well, what do we say when you know when we're taking it away because it could have been stealing?" And Jesus said, "No, tell him, tell them that the Lord needs it." Mm. That's so you, true. Yeah, and then. The, the Bible says, Mark, uh, Matthew 21, check it, always check your Bible verses. Matthew 21 says, they gave it up immediately. I never saw it like that, but you're right. The, Jesus didn't have to beg 
for this cult. Mm -hmm. Jesus didn't have to convince people. He didn't even have to throw out a Bible verse. He said, just knowing that the Lord needs it. And I think that's amazing because the person gave it up immediately. Wow. You know, Jesus could have come on many different ways. He was, he was making the prophecy come true where it says the king will come on the donkey. But I love how the person gave it up immediately without questions, not saying, oh, well, how are you gonna use my money? How are you gonna use my donkey? Is it gonna be worth it to me? It was just, you know what? The Lord needs it. Now, Jesus could have come into to Jerusalem in anything. It could have been a turtle or a horse. And it, it would have been the king coming into Jerusalem, but the people made it triumphant, the people wow. there. Okay, how? I mean, because they made it a big scene. It's like there could be a king, but if someone doesn't recognize he's a king, then there's no triumph, correct? You're right. People were recognizing that Jesus was triumphant because he came in this donkey, and then they gave up their garments. More honor, more tithing. Do you understand what's happening here? Wait, so he, he tithed by giving the donkey. Yes. And the people are tithing by giving their garments. Yes. Now, why were they giving their garments, though? It was it was honor. It was just like uh, me saying, I'm going to give up who I am. I mean, if you were a priest or if you were a woman, it was your honor. Covering up your hair was covering up your honor. Um, if you were a man, it was showing who you were. So depending on what you wore, it showed your position in society from poor to rich. So in this, they're saying, I give up myself so to they, this king that's coming in they gave him to jesus and to the disciples for them to wear or what were they doing no it was being trampled on on the floor the donkey or jesus and his disciples were going to end up stepping on it so they were just using it as like a walkway yes but it was honoring the king that wow. was coming so they weren't even asking like oh take my best garment but keep it clean or use it the way that i want or or no it was i give it to you i give myself to you do what you want with it wow. and you know what a donkey represented work loyalty Peace. So that's what we give up to God. Honor. So please, I mean, we serve Jesus in so many different ways, whether it is your donkey, your work, your time, your peace, your garments, you're really giving it to the body of Christ. Jesus needed it, but only for his people. And, and the beginning of the church, they were being persecuted because they were changing religions and people were literally killing them or taking away money from them. So many people nowadays are still being persecuted financially by families that say, if you change religion, religions, I'm going to disown you. I'm going to take your money away. No, I don't want you to go to that church, so I take your money away. That's a form of persecution. So when... The, when someone comes, whether it's a single mom or a person that just lost their job or what if they need help with DACA or what if they need help with getting into a rehab, they come to the church. That is why we give tithes and offerings so that we can help the body of Christ. You are giving it to Christ by giving it to your people. Wow. And they shared everything. They, the new church just split up everything so that they wouldn't be persecuted. And in their persecution, they were gonna be united. And I think we still have to do that today. That same mentality of, I'm gonna honor Christ by giving to his people without questioning, without being bitter about it. And you know what, if you are bitter, just keep your money, but still come. Still come to God. Because more, more than your money, God wants you. Definitely. So that is our lesson for today. <laughs> Those are our kids. <laughs> um, thank you so much. And that's our we son. We gotta go. <laughs>